So as it marks the three year anniversary of my moving to France, I recently started thinking about in what way I changed due to moving to and settling down in France. The other day I came across a video from Helena Woods. If you guys don't know her, make sure to check her channel out. She's super nice. She makes really aesthetic videos and she was basically talking about the 10 surprising French habits that make for a happier life and that video really inspired me. So in this video I'm gonna talk about the French habits that changed the way I look at things basically. So the concept of slow living has been around for a while now. Slow living basically encourages a slower approach to everyday life. In France, slow living is very present, in my opinion. It might be because of their Latin roots, but the French don't rush things. French people don't like to rush. At work, for example, people have at least a two-hour lunch break where they get to go to a restaurant with their colleagues, where they get to socialize or even have a glass of Fine occasionally. In France, it's very rare to see people work between noon and 2 p.m. as this is that precious window of time where people can eat lunch in peace and socialize. My boyfriend, for example, tells me regularly that sometimes they even play board games at his work during lunch break and even sometimes during work hours. Another example is dinner invitations in France. The first time I got invited to a family dinner in France, I was very shocked to find out that the dinners take so much time, basically. So when you're invited to a dinner in France, it's very normal that the apéro would start around 5 p.m. The apéro is kind of like a window of time where you just chat with each other over a drink and you're snacking and you're just socializing, basically. So then dinner would be served around 7 p.m. Desserts would be served around 8 or 9 p.m. And of course, there is also the post-dinner tea or coffee at around 11 p.m. before everybody slowly decides to leave and go back home. If you're ever invited to a dinner in France, prepare yourself that you will probably spend the whole afternoon eating and chatting for hours and hours on. Pleasure and living well is very important in French people's life. Pleasure and living comes first. Work is secondary. And meanwhile, you can surely find people in France who are workaholics and who live for their work. It's definitely a lot less common than in countries like the US or China, for example, where I used to work. I used to work in Shanghai and it was very normal for us to finish work at 11 p.m. and then start working the next day at <laughs> 7 a.m. But in France, it's not like that at all. I personally much more resonate with the French approach to work-life balance because when you take out time to see people and enjoy your life and have fun, it's not only a better way to live, but it's also much more likely that you will not burn out as fast. <music> Contrary to popular belief, French people are not lazy. They just prefer being productive and working efficiently rather than working hard but not getting any good results. Also, taking breaks is extremely important in France. I'm highly convinced that the reason why French people can work so well is because they know when to stop work and is because they know when to just let things go and stop working and do other things. Taking breaks is extremely important in France. I mean, it's no wonder that they have five weeks of paid annual vacation. It's amazing. So Helena already mentioned in her video that in France, when you're having an intellectual open conversation, nobody ever really feels the need to get defensive or to fight with each other if you have opposing opinions. And I can really relate to that. And that's definitely my experience of having conversations with French people as well. What I really love about French people is that they always leave room for disagreements in a conversation. It's such a normal and even more than normal it's such an essential part of conversations in France to disagree 
and to argue sometimes with each other and to get into debates because this is the only way that you can learn from each other and see things from different perspectives. If everybody always agrees, you will never learn new things, you will never discover new viewpoints. Disagreeing is extremely important in France and arguing is very important as well. I already talked about this before in a video with my French boyfriend who was basically explaining to me why it is so important in France to argue with each other and to get into debates. Les Français adorent, adorent débattre. Mm -hmm. Ils vont toujours trouver un petit truc et dire oui mais mm. pour eux c'est pas un conflit le débat. Mm. Le débat c'est ça fait partie du dialogue. Mais tu sais, je pense que dans beaucoup de pays, c'est pas commun de, de faire autant de débats, même à l'école. C'est pas dans l'esprit des gens. Ah, c'est sûr, c'est sûr qu'il y a des pays où je pense quand tes parents ils te disent un truc, tu dis oui. Mais pas juste ton parent, mais à l'école aussi. Quand le prof dit quelque chose, tu, tu remets pas en question mmh. ce qui était dit. Tu acceptes. I don't know how we went from French people are rude to. <rire> Bah parce que c'est ça, mm. parce que j'ai pas dit ah oui ou non, je dis oui mais tu sais c'est comme ça, c'est pareil, mais en fait, et après à la fin, on a trouvé une idée qui est plus juste. His idea was that basically in France, arguing leads to even greater things and it is a phenomenon that's equally very present in French education. During my three years of studying communication at a French university, the most important thing I learned was basically to question everything and to get to the core of the other person's argument. You can talk about anything with French people. You can talk about politics, you can talk about societal issues. People are very open-minded. Most people, obviously not everybody, but most people are open-minded to having conversations like this. So before we get into the third French habit, I just quickly want to let you guys know that I'm still doing one-on-one -on -one consultations if you guys are interested in moving to France or if you're interested in coming to France to study and we also have a Facebook group now for people who are interested in living in Paris or studying in France so all those links are down in the description box below if you want to join the Facebook group feel free to do it and without any further ado let's get back to the video if I would have to describe French women I would say their style is very effortless but classy. It's the perfect balance between sweet and salty, between looking masculine and feminine, between looking messy and tidy at the same time. When you see the way French women look in their style and in their fashion, everything looks so effortless. All the clothing, all the pieces that they put together always seems so effortless, but if you look a little bit closer, you will see that actually a lot of effort was put into looking that effortless. Their clothes radiate a I don't care that much vibe, but they actually make a conscious effort to look like they don't care. What I really love about French women's style is that they always know when it's the right balance, whether it be the right balance between colors, the right balance between luxury pieces, or the right balance between looking like a boy and a girl at the same time. French women don't like to be extravagant or show off their luxury pieces or to look like they're trying too hard. They don't want to look like they're trying too hard. They don't try too hard to showcase their beauty or to do crazy makeups. They don't have to. They are already classy and elegant and fashionable without any of those things. When it comes to dressing up and fashion in France, less is definitely more. But for example, when it comes to French cuisine and cooking, the more butter the better. <laughs> but that's a topic for another video. So I hope that you enjoyed these French habits that really changed my life in the three years that I've been living in France. I hope that you feel inspired to follow any of these French habits. And again, if you want to join our new Facebook group because you're interested in living in Paris or studying in France, feel free to do that. The link is down below in the description box. And if you're interested in moving to France or moving to Paris or coming to France to study, feel free to reach out to me. I'm still doing one-on-one -on -one consultations. Link is down below. And thank you so much for watching. See you guys next week. Bye.